afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting play around the cast. I'm your host, Imperial Dane, Master Propaganda, here of Psych Defender of the Fatherland, off here to bring you another exciting, another amazing propaganda cast. All right here, right now, on Velshanka. Yes, indeed, it is Velshanka. The setting is 1944. The Ghost Archland is launching a counter attack to reclaim this area in preparation for a larger scale assault by the 3rd SS Panzer Corps. In East, we got Tiramisu holding the line here for the Red Army, the Soviet Union. The 17th Guards Rifle Division with Guard Motor, Counterattack Tactics, Urban Defense Rest in the West. We got Angai from here, fighting for the Ghost Deutschland Panzer Division for Germany. Deutschland here with the Oberkommands with Firestorm, Breakthrough, and Luther Ground Forces. We got the Sturm Panis immediately aggressively rushing for the center victory points of current territory and wiring off trucks to. Deny the rations cover and the potential for stealing a truck. Up here, we got the forces advancing slowly for the fuel point. There, other forces support following up here for the fatherland. Doubling near starting to penal troops here for Tiramisu versus the Orbital Commander West. Penal troops are very much a common counter since they are quite effective versus the Orbital Commanders in the early game. Up here, points being secured. Tiramisu spreading out as fast as it can for some more vital points and basically getting then connected up later down the road. Ungarden spearhead maneuver continues with forces bases of used following up here, grabbing territory as the engagement continues. We got scout cars on the way there for Tiramisu. The M3A1 also very strong to, well, counter to the overcomers in the early game unless they go for double storm pioneers, which most our commanders players generally don't tend to. So it's going to have to go for the Kedenaffer, which is going to be a bit longer out in the field and course leaves them more vulnerable to the penal troopers since they're Kedenaffer. While he can fire rockets, they aren't very good versus infantry. And in the court here, cut off by Angarfen's aggressive, rapid, and nasty maneuvers there. And there you go, trying to clock off paths there by wiring off the engine. In this case, the engineer's having absolutely none of that. I'm retreating fast. We got the penal swimming up. We got the MP1 here ready though for Tiramisu for the 17th Guards at Eiffel Division. So we'll kick the pop into that way, form up a mobile strike group with which to deliver a swift boot to the fascists. And their kneecaps. Do we boot the kneecaps? Yes. And what else is rude? Since when did we care about being rude? Oh, you got a point. In the South again, units versus Fultz, because Scott Carr rushing south is there very aggressively, basically deciding this is of less relevance. He's going to strike here in the south. Probably because the Fultz there, of course. Oh, never mind. He seems to be backing off. Ungarten is a man of many. Well, TMEs, of course, is a man of ability to switch opinions anytime as needed. Pumas on the way there, and there goes Sturm Panis with Pulse. Once they split up, might be in fact what he's waiting for. It could have been fake, but it was bait. He might have intentionally rushed the party, thinking, you know, all right, it's saved the scout casting towards my southern units. And then he strikes the sneaky blast, in which case that is um very clever play there by Tiramisu. Very clever in this case, slight issue there with the truck, not quite dicky in face. Might be able to not get the wipe with Sturm Panis on the candy. That'd be huge. That'd be 300 manpower gone, plus, of course, a pretty good unit, but no. They make it safely back home. Well, Otto makes it safely back home. The rest don't. They're dead. The opposite of safe. Well, technically, you're sort of safe when you're dead. I mean, unless there exists a hell, in which case you're definitely not safe. Fultz is moving about here. And Guinea's standing about shooting a bit as well. And Garden taking up. Could be making nice. Could be Battle Group Headquarters. We'll have to see what it goes for. The current sort of meta sort of has it a bit 50 50 ish, in my opinion. At least in my experience, forces moving ahead here. Scout cut they're dealing with the forces, trying to do as much damage as possible. It's enough, he's stopping up here around here, but he might, of course, be worried about a cannon like, following up swiftly, in which case, of course, being on the other side of the building does tend to decrease your chance of the pony just sneaking up when he should be able to spot it here. Now, we've got flame up as well. The cannon at the ready. Shoots, hits the house, and of course, also gives away the position into Tiramisu quite splendidly. Third penal to one way here for Tiramisu, Stuart Pine is going forward again. And there you go, Academy of Pulse, but it's not gone. It is not gone. It's still hanging about there, waiting in the background to blow up any Bolshevik scout cars. And there you go. Penal was here, repulsed by the Stuart Pioneer scout coming in with flamethrowers in the back as well. But I have to say, firing a flamethrower for a moving vehicle is pretty hazardous to everyone involved, except possibly the Germans. Scout car down, most of the engineers caught gone. What did they get for not wearing suit belts? Far south, the point they were short by Tiramisu, so good uh, management of things there. Troops healing and forcing so far, a bit of a rough start here. In the face of Angreifen's vicious assault. 
as his men launch themselves headlong at Tiramisu. The south there point being secured and grabbed. You got Pimps and units moving forwards with another squad coming up here to possibly trying to get behind the retreat path. They might have waited once to try and pull them a bit further back there so it's these units engages first, in which case they might have a better chance of getting some more damage for then retreats. Because you might think the retreat path and safer step with this. Ungarden could of course be much faster. It's more likely to find faster retreat, but then again maybe we'll retreat as fast anyways, but you know. All the way falls to the retreating. Small chance of getting a wipe here, but seems like uh, Lady Fortune has seen herself a bit cross at Tiramisu in this situation. Maybe didn't compliment her on a new dress. I don't know. Troops reinforcing. We got medics on the way there for Tiramisu as well, grabbing the northern munitions point. Back here, Bell Group headquarters up for Ungarden with the medics immediately on the way to provide vital medical support for this infantry. Stumpa charging and Pimps up at Airgoes with 40 with assault rifles at this range. Pimps of the should have a decent chance, particularly seeing as they have the light cover and the Stuart Pioneers have no cover. There you go. Execute almost the entire lot with while only suffering one casually is pretty good there for Tiramisu. Ha! Look at those fascists running! Well yes, most of them were dead, so it's more like fascist. Grandma is important. Shut up, Dimitri. No one likes you when you correct stuff. I'm pretty sure that's why you're sending the penal battalion in the first place. Uh -huh. Around the point here, shots being fired, followed those slowly bleeding out here in the face of the Shrafniki. Heavy cover versus light cover plus penal troopers. Not really good combination for the full scan of these. Where Sevilla Gandan Gavni pressing the uh, breakthrough doctrine button and calls in the Mexica Panzerfusliebe. Which were basically just a name, another name for Panzer than it is, by the way, whereas Relic it seemed to fit to make them some sort of reconnaissance unit, which technically was the Fusiliers, and they were part of the infantry divisions. Fun fact. And he's got Pimps of Indonesia, Bart Wire, making hard here from to mount defense, whereas the Fulton on the hand, the Fulton be flanked by the Penal Troopers, are going to struggle a bit with that. But there you go. They on the hand are then getting flanked by a Panzer Fusilier squad, which is almost getting ready to get their G43s out. So there we go. Still Tiramisu's got an answer territory, it's going for Gart Motor. Likely means Gart Rifle. And we got breakthrough tax here from Ungar, just gonna launch another assault here for Deutschland. In the south of the being spotted by the news. Initially, by the way, the call starts when they went to have Panzer Fuzzle, but still all went on and things got, you know, a bit more grim to morale boost, more and more units sort of got the title. Initially once the you know, but formed up from the call stance initially, but even like say the and Göring, Fadschi and Panzer they shown got their own Panzer Fusilier Battalion when they had formed into a full Panzer Corps. But they're going to be reported by the Panzer Fusilier. Taking some heavy damage up far north. They got the full of the engineers. Heavy cover versus no cover. The engineers should have the upper hand there with a flamethrower. And in fact, the Fusiliers are using no cover. Victory Pons was so far. Angarden said they have Tiramisu. Bit of a problem there for him. And the breakthrough tactics, like they aren't making things easier for Tiramis. We got the first guard squad out here for the 17th Guards Rifle Division. There we go, rapidly running on the fuel point neutral. Breakthrough tactics, as you can see, is excellent for harassment. Wunderbar, even. Folks are being swarmed by the Pilots of the Repulse here. Some casualties slowly piling up there for the fascists, the Hitlerite scum. Shots. Waving back and forth here, we got the Fulkers moving in with Stuart Pioneer support backing them up. MG34 there on the way for Angaven to help further suppress Tiramisu's trooper. Not a bad choice at all. The EP light machine, and a bit late, I think, for the gas, but of course, he might not have been able to just manage it where the thing was going on. Still. Better late than never when it comes to the DP light machine, and so it is an absolutely amazing upgrade for the guardsman. A kind of setting up here. Angreifen uh, clearly sounds worried about the potential of light vehicles here from Tiramisu. T7 it could give Angreifen quite the hairy problem to deal with. So in this regard, Angreifen is taking no chances. Back here, healing and forcing. MD34 being hauled forwards. Skirmish continue. The Panzer will still have the advantage, in part because the Panzer uh, Penal troops can't hit back. And they're not in heavy cover, the Panzer as it is are. But there you go. Somehow he's slowly rotating about with a rifle up his arm. <laughs> oh god! It's happening faster! <laughs> oh no! 
Uh, what's happening, Pietro? Uh, I don't know. He just began spinning with a rifle up his bum. Uh, I don't know anything. Engineers need to be careful being pushed back with the fortune of the MD34. Shots slowly move fire about. He people should probably get back and then replace the troops with someone who's not gonna spin about with a rifle up their ass. Grenade off. Or Satchel charge, in fact, wiping up full filter squad here. Nice throw there by Tiramisu, taking advantage of Ankar and focus on the center to punish him there for not being able to pay attention. Stone Pass are charging in there. Of course, they don't have to worry about the Satchel charge, but they are still taking a bit of damage in the end. That they might have a small chance, and there they go. Tiramisu retreats here rather than risk it. Most likely the good. Are the best choice there. Unit preservation in many cases basically boils down to just deciding out of the type 2 situation with the odds what's more likely and do you actually like losing your units? In most cases, of course, the answer is no. So it always boils down to should I just retreat here rather than risk, you know, getting them and what again? Because again, I'm at this stage feeling I'm not going to get anything done, anyways. But there you go, fresh unit rhyming, pushing back the stream punch, got a track out here for Ungarden. Likely the spear punted quarters with the penal defending, it's going to be a bit difficult on the account. His fuel harassment of uh, Tidamiso is working out well as well, so Tidamiso is not going to be able to just push ahead either, though he is certainly taking up here. He might actually want to consider having more to just bombard the infantry and more importantly help deal with the support weapons. Second pass will be scored out here for Angrath and Key 33 is on the way for that one as well. He is moving up. And you throw they're being flanked by the engineers setting up to cover the fuel point again. I'm going to up some really excellent harassment here for Tiramisu. The Tiramisu is definitely more than eager to return the favour, but without machine guns or the heavier support weapons, he is struggling a bit more with it compared with the uh, Garden here, who's certainly uh, putting into good effect. The Tiramisu is more than eager to just reduce this little fascist problem. Grab the center victory point T, gas from there, grab the calf point, finally fuel point there, we claim once more by the German army. Truck gonna set up most likely to cover the fuel point that way, making it much harder for Tiramisu to harass Ungarfen. Pretty standard stuff in most ways. Ungarfen really hasn't had much chance laid on mines, so the fighting has just been so much back and forth that he's not really had the opportunity to get any breathing space to lay down mines in. No, he has, he's still busy with other things like taking up. In this regard, trying to take out as fast as possible as the Germans are not a bad idea at all. If you can get out a fast T-35, that will definitely put some pressure on Tiramisu. Plus, if he goes for the Panther 4, it's going to get punished. So he could, in fact, force Ankar to have to go for a Panther, which means things are going to slow down quite a bit there. On the other hand, he's going to need more T-35s, so he should have faster, a better chance versus the Panthers. So Tiramisu, of course, should probably be prepared for the potential of a Panther there, though. Admittedly, a lot of German players will go for Panthers or Panzer Force anyways in the face of T-35, despite the T-35 basically being superior to the Panzer IV. Back here, troops in reinforcement, got the gas being sold by the Fox we got the penal troops moving in as well here. Lots of firepower there, and there you go, hauling into cover, got the machine gun backing up here, making it a bit harder here from, and there you go, we got to uh, hit the dirt. Does not protect most of the suppression on the Garsman, on there, but it does, does increase the range and accuracy. And the range is just by a little bit, but basically just makes them a real meaner with the light machine guns and anti-tank rifles. But in this case, the incendiary grenade pretty much undermine that entire bit. Fulton vs. Engineers. I mean, he could also just push for a T-3476 now, but again, he might be worried about the Panzer IV, in which case, again, T-35 is just better. But a T-34-76 could still be a possibility though in this situation, considering the fuel situation and the fact that again, Ankarten has very successfully harassed him, the T-34-76 rush is more likely I think to fall flat on its face. Shooting here, Sturm Pioneer slowly bringing up to the penal troops, the SVT-40 was the Sturm Gewehrs, in this case, this quantity over quality, but there you go, even bigger quantities pushes back the uh, rations. Also fun fact, the G43 was actually based off the Soviet SVT-40 semi-automatic rifle, since the German G41 semi-automatic rifle, it turned out, wasn't that amazing. At least they had some severe deficiencies. Fun fact, it actually was based, used the Danish Bang system, the G41, and a more fun fact, Bang is actually a Danish name. No surname. Or Bang. It's a little fun fact there. 
Double G for the fees here though, versus the Guardsman, they're holding up here, hitting the dirt, but the problem is they're versus units in heavy cover, and Guardsman's hit the dirt, unlike the Guardsman's hit the dirt, does not, you know, provide any, you know, uh, well, protection versus bullets. It just, again, gives them better, you know, rate of fire, more DPS. To the music, this goes again the T-45 here. I do still feel like Kane Mortis could be a very good idea here to sort of bombard and, you know, make it harder for Angard and dig in. It plays here with the Panzer for Zlila. Shots blazing back and forth here. And in the center, we got the MG-34 backing out of Ked now. First, the push for the car point once more. And Grand is just absolutely on the ball here with a rapid against Tiramisu. And this certainly uh, making much harder for Tiramisu to pull off his tech plan. Was again, it allows Ankar more successfully to push for him as well. Still, he is very, very close to the T-35. There you go, MG-34 covering up here. You need to retreat. And there you go, T-35 only for Tiramisu. It goes for us as soon as he can. Pushing ahead there with superior medium armor. It's starting to look like Angraven has already seen this. I mean, he's seen the Guardsman. He's seen no medium armor. Otherwise, no light armor. And again, much so meta right now is very much focused on T-35. So, I mean, it could very well be that Angraven is very much just going to go for the Panther straight away rather than the Panther IV. Plus, it's not like he desperately needs the Panther form, and he's always in a reasonably good situation in the rest of the infantry, so the Panther in this regard is the superior choice and minimizes, obviously, Tiramisu's chance of really staging a big comeback. Unless he fails to get the T 45s and Tiramisu begins building up a larger force of them. Other way, first tank on the field here, the T 3045. Out there, looks like he's setting up for a deeper flank. You no, know, at the path he's saying he could have gone straight here for Angard in the center, but he's basically going about here. Most likely, looking to you know, cut off tree paths or also avoid like Kedden there from because he's expected to be pointing ahead on. And might even hope to you know, just murder some stuff in the retreat. So, nice move there by Tiramisu. Nice bold flank. I like to see that. In this case, getting flanked with the spare punch quarters, but it does mess up here. Angard can push here in defense. Engineers that got wiped. That's actually a bit lost. Got some charge off here. Oh. Close one, and there you go, full retreat here from Angraven. I mean, he lost in the news, but still managed to push back a lot of his forces. And we got the Panther on the way there for Angraven. Needs to grab out that cut point again, and he probably should consider mining it when he has the chance. I do feel like that's something that Angraven no look that or a cache of some sort, but I do think Mars could have a great work there. And I mean, he's still got a lot of munitions running up, to be honest. Oh, wait, Tifa Five, they're clearing out the corpses. Sergei, are you sure there's not better ways to deal with corpses? Yet. Great order from Stalin. Are you sure? Can I see it? No. It is only available to trustworthy people. You're not trustworthy. You steal everybody else's vodka. Shut up. Got the fighting again. Hit the dirt. Sadly, be on the own. We got. Well, he just blew up the house. That was preemptive destruction there. Tim Musa would have nothing of that. Panther on the way there, Panzer Kampfwagen 5, model A, which is actually the second model of Panther, not the first one, that would be the D model. And you can tell from uh, the radiation parts in the rear, this sort of forms up the little triplets there, and the fact it has a, well, spot for the driver to look out for the front of the armor there, it was removed on the D model, and the D model didn't have any uh, radiation there, parts down the uh, exhaust. Little fun fact there. T-5 falling back, Panther shoots, misses, spectacularly, quite lucky there for Tiramiso. Guys from the line there go, buttoning it up. Shots fired, but they're not having the best luck there with the Panther's front alarm. Sidearm was actually quite weak to anti-tank rifles, the one of the reasons until they decided to have armor skirts of actually, you know, considering just going for the Panther 2. Until again, someone decided just to slap on a fun and use his armor extra on the sides. The Panther falling back Back here in the face of the gas from Pinlock Machine being added. Tiramisu needs to get for that T-35 as soon as possible. Or the A-35 here was the pan, that would not be a bad choice either. Make two points wise. Less of a difference here though. I'm still in lead here versus Tiramisu. Pinlock Machine almost done.
properly improved back by the penal troopers. Also, in the Panther, you can actually argue it makes sense that it takes long to get the upgraded because the hatch on the Panther actually took several minutes to unlock or open up with a hatch into from the inside. Admittedly, in most situations, it would have been a problem anyway, since most tank commanders would have driven around with a hatch open so they had a better overview. Third commanders on the hand were in fact instructed to always keep the hatches closed, at least they went early on the war, which caused some uh, problems. Panther shoots, misses, but there we go, T for the problem, you know, not covering up, that's not quite able to hit, there we go, shoots, bounces off the Panther's armor, Panther returns the favor, but does not bounce, cheeky little scam. Going for the T for the party, you can see Tim, quick falling back, takes another hit here from the Panther, Strafniki out, no miss, the Panther can't find him, got the Panther coming in from the other side, sandwiching the Strafniki in a kill zone. Tamiz was not too far from for the another T45 on H25. Panther moving ahead here rapidly through the terrain. Oberleutnant Fullmilk is having none of that. Panther delivers the guardsman, shots fired there, close to veteran 3 there, go hit the dirt again. Gaining in fact the veteran 3 the hero level. Ultimately, they're still up against an awful lot of Germans, including the MD-34, and the guards have to retreat. To the means of those going to go for the second T-45, which, if he can combine with Mark Target and a good flank, he has a good chance of taking out the Panther. I'm still surprised he's only gone for one guard squad. In most situations like this, most of the players at least commit to two, if not three, guard squads, since they are pretty good. Heavy Mortar, I think, also could have you know, been... Yeah, well, still would be a pretty good choice. Smoke screens, but also just the ability to take out the machine guns like Kevnavs and the lights from afar. I'm glad I'm bringing up more machines so that way, hold back the Russian infantry. Second T45 has arrived here for Tiramisu. First T45 is also fixed up. Digging in here with Samex, but played there by Angraven. Far behind here in the temple of the calf point is thwarted by the strap punch, of course, looks like he got about. Great for Angraf and less uh, great there for Tiramisu. There you go, T45 is advancing, going straight ahead here. We got Kedmus Bob, we got Mark Vehicle on the pant, he's definitely going to go for it. But can he do it? Shot advancing. Penetrating here on the Panther. Seeing off a nice chunk, decides to pull it off in this case. SDS focuses on securing the front line here against Angraven. Case mines would still be a pretty damn good choice. I'm assuming he can somehow fake. Nope, he goes for the Panther again now. Shot bounces, Panther in hand does not. Second shot misses the Panther here. Six kills on the Panther. We got the T for the first falling back. In this case, I'm mounting the Schwerpunkt quarters, forming up a bit more of an extra threat he does not wish to tangle with. Instead, switching targets here to the MD 34 crew in the south to cut things out there. Good move, good move. Mines would also be a really good movement. Yeah, we do finally get some mines here from Tira Misa. I thought it took a bit of a while there. Panther advancing again though. Unguarding is fearless. He believes in NC. Betsy Free Gasman with a deep clamp machine to set the dirt as she's tearing things apart here. But Kevin never got wiped out. We could steal that. Be great there for Tira Misa. 19 kills to Sasha charge off. 20 kills on the Gansman. Getting suppressed here. And we got a fresh wave here of infantry from Angraf near preventing Tillamis from going the uh, Raketan of the State of Science to just blow it apart. And that should uh, do the trick, denying an anti tank run here to Angraf. T for the linear repair, he could combine it with self repair just to speed it up a bit or go for another engineer sport. Jack Panzer Day called up by Angraf. In this situation, you almost just consider going for another Panther, which worries arm about, anyways. I mean, if the tank destroys, I could probably understand more the Yak Panzer, but so far, Tidamisu seems less keen on tank destroyers and just more tank oriented. Keep it humming and shoots, misses. Panther advancing. On the prowl. 
Garton opening up the side arm of the Panther, doing the damage, comes with the being pinned down to the ground, Punzer for the advancing, got the Tifa moving up to try and stall the advancing of Mangarten. Mine goes off, it very good, Tifa for lands another kill there, leaving the Panzer for the of the Gorse Titan in a pretty sore state. Fine, got a second gas ball here for Tiramiso, so quite a bit of wire there for him to call it in. John Punia being pushed back here. Panther also falling a bit back in the f face of this anti tank rifle threat. And there you go. I'm committing to double Panther's here. So I would say highlights a bit just the uh, sheer advantage of being able to pull off fuel wise versus the enemies of these few can and get away with that. But also, to an extent, I think an indicator of some other realities about this fight so far. And that is part he's worried about the T 45. So I mean, he wasn't. He'd just go for Panther Force to help deal with the infantry. But. He's clearly worried about the T for the party. He's going to commit to another Panther. Nabbing the anti-tank roughly. I think mostly just to deny it to uh, to Musil. And the same thing cast roughly is more than anything. There you go. T for flanking the Panther. Gets off a bit of a hit, but it's already taking so much after the Panther. He has to fall back. It'll be a bit of a waste there for Tila Musil to lose his T for the party there. Possibly even a death sentence for his efforts in this sector. And we get a second Panther out here for Angreifen, adding a pinlight machine to that one as well. Very good. It's not very often you get to see double Panthers from an Orbital Commander West player, and certainly not in one versus ones, but Angreifen obviously is not the average player. He understands that the key to victory lies in superior German machinery. And of course, with tactics. Big push here, more or less a warm assault here, wave attack from uh, Tiramiso, almost a blob, you know, wiped out here. This looks like it got wiped out. Panther falling back in the face of all these anti tank rifles and whatnot. Turning about here, more anti-tank rifle fire, shots bouncing off, most not really doing a lot of damage to the Panthers. Panther was even need to back up both by way veterans before. Could hit the dirt here, and there we go, we've got at least one here. Panther's going ahead, going to have to grenade at the right time, I think, to stop them. Darson said he gets grenaded here by Angraven's Panzerfusslieder. That's to lead a successful charge against the Bolshevik swine. Tiramis was not too far from another T-45, though I'd say with double Panthers, H-5 might just be a bit uh, more the answer is looking for here. T-5 going to go attacking the isolated support from in the centre as the Panthers occupy what's in the south, south of charging again. You can see that Tiramis is very keen also just trying to catch Ungard North Garden and get away from the south of charge. I mean, it's very effective, of course, psychologically, it's also very effective, but it does represent a lot of resources being spent on nothing, but doesn't work out, which it will most of the time. Third T for the virus. in this case, Tiramisu is not committing to another HD fire, or to an HD fire in the first place. I mean, three T for fires can aid a lot of fire, they can absorb it, but I do feel like the HD fire here would be the better choice with its better penetration and range, plus increasing good rate of fire, but I think the Ungarden Panthers pretty well. Oh dear, T5 moving about awkwardly. Spotted by the Panthers, meet himself as a harsh body there. Panther soon, there go more hits. T5 lands a good on the Panther, which quickly feeds targets to the offending Russian tank, which immediately suffers several rolls there, noting that the first Panther has now gained virtually two shots and added. Stumpy now virtually three, probably should pull those back. Tiramis is clearly on the hunt here for fascists. Gas being straight here, so there's a big push here from Angarten. And there we go, we got three T for the fire. The problem, of course, is two of them are in dying repairs here. But meanwhile, Angarten's just going to grab as much territory as he can, possibly dig in with sandbags, mines, machine guns, and a nice bottle of schnapps. Panthers there will win their superior range against the T-45s. The Panther did have quite an effective range, mostly due to the sheer velocity of the shell, which also made it quite accurate since there was less drop-off. 
So in many cases, Panther crews felt like they didn't actually have to adjust for range very much in the tanks, but they just give them more time to fire off shots, to be honest, if they didn't have to adjust. Giving the Panther better response time in that sense, and in a lot of situations that usually was gave, you know, gave you the chance to win, if you can just respond faster. TFA Pub's almost done. Penal's just flanking in here. Penal's moving in here. Straf Nikki striking. Looks like he might be lining up for an assault with the T45s. So backed up with infantry. If he had a heavy multi, could lay down the smokes in which case you can negate the Panther's range, would be pretty good. But there you go, Panther moving hit shots fire and missing. Damage engine, Panther there being Mark Barton as well. He's gonna go in. He's already got the Panther down to less than half of in a few moments. Humes are flanking in here, machine gun about to get wiped out. There you go, veterans full machine gun gone. Panther down, he might lose a T for the five. He follows the Panther there being murdered out as well. These are some severe losses here for Andriven. There you go, Fox is flanking in. Gets one in the T for the five. Pretty good there. Van Garth with the catch is on nonetheless high. And there you go. Panther the veteran too. Might just be able to get another T for the five, which is pretty good. Sadly, 90 tanks have just anything readily available for Tillamus from dealing with the veteran Panther. There you go. Another hit here though. Garth moving up to try and stop it. Almost got the Panther, but not quite. Not quite. Pimps are there trying to move up and something, do something with flank. They did not quite work out. And we've got Pumps with anti tank rifles now grabbing the MU 34. That's going to be quite helpful here versus Ungarf and quite a turnaround here. Both T 34s there at least could be fixed up. Ungarf and has suffered some uh, more market losses there with the destruction of an entire Panther plus losing units in uh, larger numbers. Panther falling back. We've got the MD 4 We've got the Stream Punira and the Panther was there charging in. They are ready to stem the time, of course, ensure the survival of the Panther because if Ungarf and lose that Panther now. That's good night. Gute Nacht, kleines Kind. To put it very mildly. T5 are being fixed up here though for Tiramisu as fast as possible. That's called an Angreifen. And we got Assault Attili called in against Tiramisu. An interesting choice there. An interesting and slightly curious choice. Panther going to the base here. Ungarfen shows or knows no fear. Possibly both. Going through the chili pan, there's no friendly fire on that one. Quite lucky there for Ungarfen, but he's about to lose his hand and nonetheless, and losing that panel there would be quite silly, to be honest. In this case, it's not happen. Montagnier still, I think, would be a good choice for Chilemis, so he's close to them to call in another T45, which would also be pretty good. The break through tanks down the way. We got the info to suppress the penal or gas. They got gas moving north of the full screen of Dira. Striking with the fury of a thousand likes. Gas then be careful in the center. We got T for the being fixed up. Good to go. Troops are enforcing. And the T for the fire needs to make repairs. Should probably pop self repairs on that one just to speed up the process. The faster and get those tanks back, the better to be honest. In particular, since it looks like Ungarven's Panther is going to be out of fight for some while, so again, the more damage you can do, the better. Part of North Eke, Pilms with us, the foot's going to have to charge off. Dodge, though, again. Penal Troop MD34. Quite the nasty customer there for Ungarven. Okay, I think the T for the five looks like it is safe from Panther Pass for now. Still in the sign of a third T for the five on HD5. For Tiramisu, you probably go for either of those as soon as possible. Or a bunch of T 34s from sixes could also work. I mean, that gives me more raw firepower. There we go. Another T for the five here for Tiramisu and the 17th Guard to Life Elevation. There we go, Ungarven's Panther returns to the front. T4 lands a Panther and hit the Panther, obviously also does that on the T4 to 45. T4 to misses, Panther does not. He's going to have to pull back that uh, T4 to 5 as soon as possible, get the oranges back up. 
counter volley. Very close to the three. Pretty great there for Angarden. That means high mobility and high rate of fire, making that Panther much more dangerous. Directly on the T45 from the Panther. I'm going to attempt a grenade here though from Tiramiso. Not be preoccupied with other matches. 30 kills on this Gaspin, quite impressive work there by Tiramiso. <laughs> but he still needs more engineers. <laughs> Most of my apologies for the hiccups. <laughs> Bit bloody annoying. Guards on the hitting match in the feet. Units being suppressed. We've got an incendiary grenade off here against them. Trying to deny them. Cal, we got the teeth for running up here there. New one, the rookie crew. Again, I've hit on the T-45 from the Ked and Alpha. He's actually got two now. Still, we should go for more. He's got the Panther in 40, 13 kills. Metsony 3, slowly approaching Metsony 4. Which north foot strength of Vetchnik 5 Panzer for the other day alone helps the appearance with maximum chance, except for the other Vetchnik 5 Panzer for the score, which uh, rather You're gives the Germans an edge. Most T45s are good to go, but still need a bit more work. This is again where smoke screen would be great, you know, smoke say around air here, then just push through, clear out the support weapons first, and deal with the Panther. So we got a push, but without a smoke screen, head on, and nonetheless, no flank this time around for the Tiramisu, it's going straight for the Panther. Already one team level down to less than half health, Panther can far away, the other one's trying to keep up, infantry suppressed, they've got machine guns, can't quite keep pace either. Got better two on one Panther here, Panther down to close to half health, the Kenner wiped out, other team level up, they're already heavily damaged. Two of the team levels are about to go down, he could try and ram here, release the more heavily damaged one, try but not fast enough. Panther down to less than half health now. T Fox can change the wild right and there you go. Betchney 4 on the Panther. Almost got it here, but the T for the Fox almost done as well. There you go, Panther first off. On to tank grafting it. There you go. Shredded all of the T for the Fox. Sandy wasn't quite able to finish off the Panther with that. GG, game over. A loss for Tiramisu, a victory for Angarven. Honestly, at the end, had he just gone, you know, for the units surrounding the Panther, just secured the support weapons, he probably would have done a lot better here versus Angarv rather than committing everything. Otherwise, I mean, well played by both, but I feel like Tiramisu at times could have done with mines and possibly some better flanks, or at least just a heavy mortar. Like, there were certain elements there I feel like he was lacking, which rather made a use of Angarv to deal with him. Angarv made good use of his Panthers and his infantry as well. Maybe could have done some orbital down, but at least he made good use of machine guns, that way, making it harder for Tiramisu to pull off his tactics. So. Well played there in the end. So I hope you enjoyed this match. I've learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it. Also, big thanks to Raven and to Seal Sledge for donating, supporting support the propaganda cards, and allowing me to keep making these videos. So big thanks to both of you. You're all wonderful, charming, and amazing people. This is Imperial then signing off, and see you all tomorrow again for another Sunday episode. Bye.